Hi everyone, welcome to Felicity Yarn Studio. My name is Zoe. I am a fiber artist coming to you from the foothills of North Carolina. Um, I am a knitter, a spinner, a yarn dyer. Um, I guess technically I'm also a crocheter since I have a crochet project to share with you guys today. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time here, a big welcome. Thank you for checking the channel out. This is my space where I like to share all of the making that I have been up to within the last month or so. Um, if you want to find links uh, to anything that I talk about, that will all be in the description box down below. I'll try to put stuff on the screen, but to be honest, I'm pretty horrible about that when I'm going through the editing process. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't think I have much else to get through up at the top here. So I have quite a lot to talk about. The last month I've been um, really inspired and I don't know, I've been making some progress on some things. So I wanted to sit down and share that with you all today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, since my one lone crochet project is the odd man out, I will go ahead and talk about that first. If you guys have been here before, then you will be familiar with my sister who is Naomi. She's the yarn curator. Um, she and her husband have welcomed a new furry addition to their family. So that is Bing Bong, aka Mr. Bingley, aka Bubba, BB. He's, he's only been here a few weeks, but he's already got a ton of nicknames from what I hear. So, um, yes, I decided that I had to make something for my new furry nephew. And I started a granny stripe blanket for him. Here we go. Now, have I finished the blanket for my actual human nephew? No, I have not. So what do I do? I start a crochet blanket for my furry nephew. Um, but this, this is going a lot quicker than the one for my nephew, Nico. Um, his is fingering weight. This is some like chunky yarn that I had in my stash. It is Karen Tea Cakes in the Maple Matcha colorway. It is a super bulky yarn, 80% acrylic, 20% wool. I had about six of these in my stash that my mom had left with me a few years ago. I was supposed to de-stash them for her, uh, but they never really sold, so Bing Bong is getting a blanket. <laughs> um, I had six of these, so however big it winds up with six cakes is what I'm going with. I am using the Attic 24 Granny Stripe blanket um, that like everyone has done. I've made two of them. I would like to make a third for myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I cast on or chained, um, I want to say about 75 stitches to get this length, which is pretty much my wingspan, which is like, I'm like 5'5", five five, so approximately that's how wide this thing is. Um, I, I would have liked to make it about 12 to 18 inches shorter. Um, I was originally thinking about this size. I don't know if you can tell if it all fits on the screen, but um, the first time that I started this, I chained about a hundred stitches and that was, you know, obviously even bigger. So I cut it back down to like 75 and I thought it was gonna be about right. It's a wee bit wide. It's probably gonna wind up wider than it is taller. Um, but you know what? It's a dog blanket. He's going to do dog things on it. So I'm not super stressed out about it. Just whenever I've made my way through all six of these cakes, it is what it is. I forget if I already said this, but I'm, this is the total of three cakes so far. So it'll be obviously twice as tall as it currently is. Not much else to say on this one other than I'm not being fussy at all about the colors or anything. I'm just joining one cake when the other one ends, maybe trying to match up the same color so there's not like a huge glaring colorway change there. But um, yeah, this is coming right along and hopefully I will have it done sooner rather than later so old BB can have himself a blankie. Oh, and in case anybody was wondering, I am using this big boy crochet hook. It is a size M, nine millimeters. Um, it's, it's quite, quite the 
honking crochet hook here. So with that done, let's go ahead and roll right into finished objects. I have three finished things to share with you all today. The first being my Musselboro hat. This is a pattern by Isolde Teague. I knit mine out of Olan yarns in their Tough Love colorway. Um, it is a really lovely tonal purpley reddish black colorway. Um, it's kind of blowing out on the screen, but it's very subtle. And in person, this pom-pom matches it like almost perfectly. On screen with the light blowing it out, it gets a little like reddish brown looking. Um, but I really love how this turned out. I love the complimenting pom-pom on this. I don't remember the name of the Etsy shop that I got this from, but I ordered a couple pom-poms around Christmas time when I was making my sister-in-law's sock head hat, which I don't remember if I actually shared because it was kind of that mad dash to finish Christmas presents time <laughs> when I was working on it. I'll pop a picture on the screen if anybody wants to see that. Um, but yeah, I ordered a couple of pom-poms and I knew that I wanted to make something with this one in mind for myself. So that was about the time when everyone was knitting this hat pattern um, in podcast landia. So I had to jump on board and make me one of these hats. I love it. If you're not familiar with how this pattern is constructed, you start at the top and increase down and actually knit twice the length and then decrease and tuck it up in there to make a double line, double thick hat. So yeah, there is evidence of that for you all. <laughs> now, um, mine is kind of permanently sewn together because of the pom-pom. I like to attach mine with a button so that I can, if I ever need to, take it off and wash the hat. The only thing of note that I want to say is that when I was maybe about an inch, inch and a half away from finishing off the decreases up here, I had been using a US two and a half, size two and a half needle for the whole hat, which I think is a three millimeter needle. And um, I was getting really nervous about how much yarn I had left at this point. And I decided to go ahead and size down to a US size two um, or a two, 2.75 millimeter needle at that point. Um, and I just kind of knew, you know, since one end gets shoved up in there, sorry, I've been trying to avoid saying that. <laughs> um, I knew that that was gonna be the end that was always, you know, permanently on the inside. Yeah, I'm really glad that I did because I was left with like half a yard of yarn <laughs> when I was done with this hat. So it's a great stash busting pattern. It's a great alternative to using up single skeins if you're not a sock knitter. So I have a feeling that I am going to be utilizing this a lot for some of my souvenir skeins or, you know, single skeins that I don't really have a plan for other than the vague, I'll make socks with them one day. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend the Muscleboro hat by Isolde Teague. And yeah. I think there's probably going to be another one in my future here soon. Finished object number two is my Acid Rainbow Socks. Um, this is a colorway from Malia Made It. And for the heel, I used some Spectrum Fiber. And I don't remember the name. I want to say it was Trick or Treat, but I know that it was one of their Halloween colorways from fall two years ago. I don't know. If you've been here before, then you may recognize these because A, I started working on them in last spring and B, I had made myself a pair of shorty socks already out of this colorway. Same combination for the heels. Um, so I knew that I had enough to make a full size pair of socks or close to a full size pair. Um, they're somewhere between shorties and full size length there. So basic vanilla socks, 72 stitches. I did toe up, two at a time magic loop. Um, did about 10 rows of ribbing for the cuff. And I think that I'm going to send these out to a friend as a surprise gift. Um, I think I told her that she could have them in the fall and then we both forgot about it. So I'm just gonna pop them in the mail and 
you know, surprise her one of these days. So that is finished object number one, number two. Finished object number two and finished object number three is another pair of vanilla socks. <laughs> um, so yeah, these were also made with a leftover partial skein. Um, the main color here is from Junk Yarn. It is the colorway Leslie. The heel color here is also from Spectrum Fiber, and I believe the colorway is called Passion Fruit. Um, it was in the advent calendar that I bought from them two years ago. Um, and yeah, so this is a 68 stitch sock. I did them two at a time toe up magic loop. Um, for this one, I did do a short row heel instead of a afterthought heel. I did increase, I want to say about six stitches, um, a few rows before I got to the heel, did the, um, short row heel and then, you know, just decreased to give it that ever so slight gusset there. And again, the goal here was to use up all of this yarn, get another ball of yarn out of my stash. So I just knit, 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 and kind of guesstimated when I needed to start the cuff here. Um, I got about eight rows and I thought that I could use another row or two. So I just brought in the contrast color from down here. So yeah, that stitch marker is where I was last time. So last time I talked about how some of my 72 stitch socks um, were starting to get a little loose on my foot. And that's why I'm experimenting with some 68 stitch socks here. I think they'll probably just be that ever so slight little bit of snugness that I am looking for. I do machine wash most of my socks. Um, the ones made out of hand spun, I try to hand wash, but even those go in the washing machine because they're, I make my sock yarn out of super wash and nylon blend fiber. If they're non super wash, obviously I don't throw them in the washing machine. But sometimes I dry them, maybe like one in every four washes. I feel like they need to go through the dryer to really kind of shrink them back up and get them back to knit size. Um, but for the most part, I just machine wash them and hang them out to dry. I prefer to air dry a lot of my clothes. Basically, all of my tops get air dried anyway. So it's not that big of a hassle to me to pull my socks out and let them air dry as well. So that is finished object number three. Moving right along to works in progress. Um, this is a completely new cast on for me. Right after I recorded last time, uh, we got a pretty decent snowfall here. It was about eight inches of snow. So I get really excited when we have our one big snowfall of the year. <laughs> Hopefully, sometimes we don't even get that. Um, but Jason had mentioned that he wanted some gloves or he had an old like commercially made crappy pair of gloves. Um, so I told him that I would make him some new gloves. So the pattern that I wound up picking out for him is the Char Gloves by Andrea Wrangle. And I really should have gone ahead and thrown the thumb on here before recording. But um, yeah, these, this pattern is a lot of fun, actually. And it's, it's simple, but kind of sophisticated. Um, there's enough detail to keep the interest for me as the knitter, but it's not fussy. Um, so they don't feel, you know, too feminine for him. I really enjoyed this braided rib cuff and um, it's sort of similar to how the faux cables are made on my Ori cardigan that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I really enjoyed this detail so much so that I'm considering either making myself a pair of these. If I do them for myself, I will make them um, mittens that have the flap that come over or incorporating this into a sock somehow. Um, it was a lot of fun to knit and I really think that detail is super pretty there. So the palm of the hand is done with essentially what I think is the eye of partridge heel where you knit one, slip one, knit a row, and then slip one, knit one. It offsets that knit slip um, every other row. So yeah, the palm again has kind of a nice texture. I am using Olan yarns. Apparently I, I decided to stash bus all of my Olan yarns and I, I don't know how to say the name. It's R-O-E-H, Roy, Raw, 
sorry. Um, <laughs> it's a really pretty, again, subtle tonal colorway with some grays and browns and um, that kind of silvery gray in there. One of the things that I don't remember if he requested it or if I just said that I would do it for him. Um, I decided to get some stainless steel thread and kind of dupl duplicate stitch it onto the finger so that he could use his phone um, while he has the gloves on. Y'all, first of all, the stainless steel thread is surprisingly soft. Um, has a little bit of texture to it. I don't know how to describe this, um, but do I even have it up here with me? I do. Apparently you can spin um, stainless steel into thread. As I was searching on Etsy, I actually found um, sellers who sold just the fiber that you can like card into a bat and spin it and so that your you know, fiber that you spin is also touch reactive, touch screen reactive. Um, so that's what that stainless steel thread looks like. I just bought mine from a vendor already in thread form because I didn't need that much. I didn't want to go through all the hassle of spinning yarn, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's surprisingly soft. Like you would not think this is metal thread. I don't think there's anything blended with it. I think it is legit just steel fibers, which is kind of mind boggling. <laughs> Um, but again, if you kind of like rub your finger across the surface of it, it does have a bit of a texture. It's not terribly awkward, but all right, this is a weird me thing. Uh, <laughs> I have some weird textural issues like revulsions to wood things sometimes. So Naomi has it too, like popsicle sticks. Thinking about it makes my gag reflex go off. Um, wood butcher countertops or cutting boards like the thought of the knife on the ugh, ugh. <laughs> so sometimes metal things can do it too like if a metal has texture to it like the inside of the yeti mugs washing those out with my mm, I get ever so faint of that sensation sensation when I rub my finger on the whole bobbin. So I try not to think about that. Actually stitching it is fine, but if I sit there and like pet on it, ugh, no. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all to say that he uses like the very tip of his finger with his phone. I use more of the pad of my finger. So I had done that bottom line first and came back and duplicate stitched up at the top there. I did have to thread like four or six strands to get it kind of thick enough to when I stitched over, it wasn't like getting lost into the stitches and it actually makes contact with the screen. So it's not perfect, um, but it's enough that like, if he just wants to tap the screen on or swipe to something, he can see what he's looking at without having to take the glove off. So yeah, I only have a thumb and one other glove to go for him. The only other thing that I will say is if y'all think that knitting your loved ones a sweater is a chore, freaking gloves are a chore. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't make fingered gloves very often. Um, I think I've only made one or two other pairs. That is because they are a giant pain in the rear end to knit. Um, these ones I were, I made using Magic Loop. I think in the past I've used DPNs, which was Part of my problem but I will say this pattern um, might also be a little bit better written than the one that I've done in the past and it just does kind of take some finagling and creative weaving in the ends to get the finger holes to close up and look kind of neat and tidy so yeah if I make myself a pair of these they will not be gloves they will be mittens that I can bring my fingers out if I need to <laughs> Gloves are the true labor of love, not sweaters. Yeah, I said it. Well, since I teased my Ori cardigan, I think that is what I will talk about next. It is also the thing that I have been working on the most. Sorry, Darcy just walked in. Um, it's the thing that I've been working on the most over the last few weeks. So I'm knitting this out of Kindred Red in her crystalline colorway. 
The Ori Cardigan is a pattern by Pip and Pin, Megan No Decker. Um, so yeah, up here is where you can see that kind of faux cabling detail that I was talking about earlier, where it's made using a, you slip a stitch, knit two, and then pass that slip stitch over. So it's a really beautiful little detail. Um, last time you guys saw this, that's where that stitch marker is. So it doesn't look like a huge amount of progress, but you gotta think about the fact that as I was increasing down these last few um, raglan increases, knitting and purling back and forth, I was working with 500 plus stitches at this point. So each row would take me a good 20, 30 minutes to get through. Um, and there were a few nights where I could only do one or two rows before I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm over this. Um, but again, I've been reaching for it pretty frequently since then, since I separated for the sleeves. One little detail that I was not aware of until I started knitting it <laughs> uh, is underneath the sleeve, she kind of continues that little detail. And I just, the way that the little cable, faux cable decreases work underneath the sleeve, I think that's just really pretty and I don't know, it's kind of one of those details that you don't know about until you start knitting a pattern. So I'm very much enjoying this at this point. I am loving working with this yarn, even though it's a little bit um, busier than what I would normally pick out. It's actually more subdued than I thought it would be when it actually works up. So I am alternating skeins, just switching them. I'll knit and then purl back and then switch yarns, knit, purl, and then switch yarns. Um, so I've joined the third ball and I'm about to join the fourth skein of yarn. So yeah, at this point, it's just knit and purl until I have the length that I want. And then from there, some like three quarter length sleeves and a neckband around the whole thing. So I, again, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really looking forward to having a cardigan in my wardrobe. I don't currently have any cardigans, which is kind of mind boggling, or at least not any hand knit ones. I think I have one or two that I bought from the store, but um, this might be the year of the cardigan for me. We'll see how much purling I can take. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying a different construction from working in the round all the time. All right, so here's just a quick little shifty update. I don't even think I put a stitch marker where I was last time. I think maybe I got through another section of repeats and increases there. So I believe I have one more set of increases before I separate for the sleeves. Um, the main reason that I haven't done a ton of work on this one the Spin 2.0 that I did for my Laurel, I kind of want to use some of that yarn. So I was waiting till I recorded um, before caking some of that up so I can incorporate it into this one because, you know, what I need is more yarn for this project. I have probably enough to make two sweaters for this thing. So yeah, I will probably bust this one out a little bit more often now that I have that yarn available to me. But um, just for posterity details sake, this is the Shifty Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I am using all kinds of hand spun yarn from my stash. Most of these are my very early spins, as well as some leftovers from some other projects. So yeah, I feel like I'm going to look like an Easter egg in this thing, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Obviously, they are colors that I enjoy, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the whole thing knit up in all of its mosaic knitting glory. I guess that's a good segue for me to talk about the Laurel Knit Along that me and Gemma of the Gemma B Makes podcast are hosting. I have talked about this for quite a while now because this was my original spin that I was going to use as the contrast color for a Laurel jumper. This was a bump from Loop Fiber in the So Subtle colorway. I was planning on using it with this yarn, which is just some MCN that I dyed up probably about two years ago. It's just some like kind of charcoal gray, almost black yarn that's been sitting around. I had other plans for it and those kind of fell through. 
it's one of the few sweater quantities that I have had in my stash for a while that I felt like I wanted to use up. In the end, I decided like a week before the knit along starts, which if you're planning on joining us, um, the knit along started on February 1st, but it runs through the end of June. The only requirement is cast on a laurel jumper. Use the hashtag laurel knit along. Um, DM us if you want to chat about, you know, making your laurel, your progress, anything like that, yarn choices. Um, and bonus entry if you have spun your contrast color or I guess any part of <laughs> the sweater. Gemma has a few prizes. The designer of the pattern, who is Anna Durbo, she has very kindly gifted some yarn. As prizes for participants um, if you want to knit the laurel and join us and potentially win some prizes go ahead and join us for that so since that is not the yarn that I'm using um, I went back to the drawing board I looked up some fiber that I thought might complement this yarn better some colorways is what I was looking for I almost bought some fiber and literally within the 10 minutes that I was looking at it on um, a website, it sold out. I was like, well, that's a sign from the universe that I'm not supposed to use that fiber. Um, but I did take the colors as inspiration and I dyed up some fiber to use with this. That is what these are. I had a pound of fiber in my stash. It was a blend of 80% um, Targi. 10% bamboo, 10% Tussa silk. Um, so I dyed up all the whole pound of fiber. I split it into four braids. So these two are the ones that I have left. And this is what it looks like spun up. So, so I did a traditional two ply for this. For the first braid, I spun across the top to try to preserve some colors. Um, it kind of worked out okay based on the way that it's dyed. Um, I, when I dyed the fiber in the pan, I actually left it in a braid. I've since rebraided it, which is why you can see some of the white spots. But dyeing it up in a braid, I preserved some of the white, which I kind of achieved in some spots, but not as much as I was hoping for. Dyeing up non superwash wool is a completely different experience from dyeing up the like superwash blends or superwash nylon blends. The majority of what you see from indie dyers or hand dyers, um, everybody's pretty much buying their bases from the same few sources. Uh, but dyeing up non-superwash is a completely different ball game. Um, the colors don't strike as quickly. The dye has to penetrate through um, the scales on the wool so they don't hit as quickly. And that's why it maybe looks a little bit muddier or kind of softer versus some of the braids that I've spun up um, where they're very vibrant and very crisp and um, you don't get quite as much of that like softening of color. So yeah, I I like dyeing the yarn. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm going to be a fiber dyer anytime soon. But yes, I decided to spin up a full eight ounces for my laurel. Um, I got about a total of 1200 yards. These are the two little leftover bits that I had as well. 1200 yards. You guys know what I need to knit this jumper? Like 430 yards. <laughs> am I ridiculous? Yes, yes I am. So that is why some of this will be going towards my shifty just so I can have a little bit more variety to work with there. And some of this might be getting gifted to Naomi when I have, you know, wound off what I want from this. Am I ridiculous? Yes, yes I am. But that's why you guys keep coming back for more. <laughs> So yeah, I can finally now cast on my shifty since I started spinning this second spin mm, about a week before the knit along was supposed to start. So I will be caking this up and casting it on after I finish recording today. And I'm very much looking forward to getting my laurel started. 
Hey, it's me, Editing Zoe. Um, I just wanted to say that I forgot to mention that I will also be offering up some prizes for this knit along. Um, potentially those two extra braids that I showed you guys from my spin, um, if you're a spinner. If you're not a spinner, I will definitely be offering up some yarn as well. I just haven't sat down and pulled some or ordered anything yet. So yeah, join us for the knit along and potentially win some yarn or fiber. All right, the last knit along project whip that I have to share with you guys is the progress on my primrose jumper. I have not pulled this out in quite a while to share with you. Um, and it, it might not be a ton of progress, but it was, it felt like a ton of knitting. <laughs> um, so the last time you guys saw this, I was right here where that stitch marker is. Um, this is the body of the jumper. It's knit from the bottom up. Um, so yeah, I have done all of that color work. I'm finally getting to those motifs that actually look kind of like a flower. Maybe not. Maybe these are just more of the stars. But anyway, this is the Primrose by Marie Wallen. And I am participating in the knit along that's being hosted by Nikki of the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. Here is a picture of what I am knitting. So I am about right about here on the body. So I believe once I'm done with the body, I have to knit the sleeves and then you join the sleeves and the body all together and then start working the yoke and decrease up to the neckline. So sometimes I pull this out and I get into a groove and I knock out like five or six rows and I'm like, yeah, that was really fun. Other times I pull it out, I do like two or three repeats, you know, of a motif and I'm like, I, I'm just don't not feeling it um it's a slow knit for me um and that's okay sometimes i'm in the nude <laughs> sometimes i'm in the mood for a slow knit and other times i'm not so i just kind of have to really think about when i want to knit on this um i am really enjoying it i did buy the kit from marie wallen um i actually think it wound up being less expensive I mean, don't get me wrong, this was a splurge for me. This whole kit was um, trying to piece together 14 colors, making sure they all like coordinate and go together nicely. Um, in the end, it was just a lot easier for me to order the kit from her website. I really love the color palette of the original too. She has a kind of a more like cool toned palette for this as well. Um, but I think that this is really pretty. Um, again, with it being a slower knit, it's gonna be an heirloom piece. I really wanted an all over color work jumper um, in my wardrobe and kind of in my repertoire as a knitter. I kind of jump back and forth between loving it and like, oh, is it not over with yet? But the wool is super sheepy. Every time I pull it out, I get a nice whiff of wool. <laughs> so Marie Wallen has her own yarn and that's what these kits are made with. British Breeds. It's a blend of Blueface, Lester, Exmoor, Wensleydale, and Zorpel's sheep breed. So it is quite pretty. It will be quite the finished object when I am done with it. So if you are interested in knitting a Marie Wallen pattern, um, check out Nikki's podcast and she has some more details on that for you guys. I think it runs through the end of July, like around August is when it started last year. So um, yeah, I think there's still plenty of time. If you're if you're more monogamous than I am in your knitting, you could definitely knock out a jumper, but she's got hat patterns and sock patterns and a lot more like smaller patterns if that is more your size of project to knit. I guess that leaves me with just a couple of spins to mention here at the end. I got fluff in my nose now. Um, I did finish the Malabrigo spin that I shared with you guys last time. I think I had two out of the three bobbins done. Um, this is in, I think the colorway was called Plomo. Um, and this is a three ply, about a DK weight yarn um, in their Malabrigo. Malabrigo in their merino base. Um, so this will go in my shift blanket stash. I'm just kind of spinning up any random um, 
non-super wash braids and I'm going to eventually knit myself a shift blanket. If anybody has knit a non-super wash blanket, um, drop me a comment below. Let me know how that worked out for you. How long did it last? Um, did you have any problems with it? Like I, I'm a little bit like, is this a good idea? <laughs> I don't think it's a bad idea necessarily. I mean, I remember growing up, we used to have wool blankets on the bed, like commercially made felted wool blankets. I don't want to felt mine at all. Um, <laughs> and I don't anticipate washing it a whole lot. Like I, I mean, I wash the blankets that I use in our living room, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, what your experiences are. If you've ever made a non super wash um, or non acrylic blanket, that's my plan. I'm only two skeins in so far. So if I need to readjust my plan, let me know. <laughs> Anyway, um, a few weeks ago, I was scrolling Instagram as one does, and I kind of fell in love with this picture of some super bulky hand spun yarn that someone had spun up. Um, I don't even know how it came onto my feed. It might have been on the explore page. I don't remember. Um, but that got me thinking. I, from the start of my spin career, if you will, um, I my goal was always to spin as fine a yarn as possible because that's what I tend to knit with the most is like fingering to sport to DK weight yarns. Um, it never really like appealed to me to spin some chunkier or bulkier weight yarns. Um, but that yarn was absolutely stunning. And I was like, I kind of want to try spinning some of that because I like I need to know how to do the things. <laughs> I want to know, I want to master it all. <laughs> so I took a braid out of my stash. This is from Port Fiber. It's Targi, 100% Targi, and I believe the colorway is called Bite Me. So this was 4.6 ounces of fiber. I split it into four equal sections. So the first two that I attempted to spin um, and somewhat of a heavier weight um, is this one. And this one came out closer to like an Aran to heavy worsted weight. So a little bit lighter than what I was aiming for. This one came out more of a kind of closer to like a chunky weight. It's more what I was aiming for. So side by side. The bulkier one I got about 92 yards and the like Aran weight I got about 136 yards. The really interesting thing to me about spinning these was it's somehow easier and harder to spin these heavier weight yarns. Um, the video that I watched on YouTube, um, she just kind of stripped her fiber down into like pencil size strips of roving or maybe like finger size. And depending on how bulky you want it, um, there's very little drafting involved because when you're spinning a bulkier yarn, you don't need as much twist because the fibers are going to grab onto each other. They have less distance to travel. So again, if you just want something super bulky, you really don't have to draft it at all if you've kind of stripped it down into the size that you already like. So when I did the Aran weight one, I was still kind of drafting a little bit. Um, I maybe didn't strip it down quite as thin as I should have. Um, on this one, I got a little bit closer to what I was aiming for. I think the problem for me was when I was stripping the fiber down, it's really hard to get consistent strips of fiber that are, you know, exactly the same diameter. So it does take a little bit of finesse, you know, to kind of get an even-ish result. But I feel like heavier weights are a little bit more forgiving and you can have a little bit more kind of thick and thin happening with them. Um, so since these were kind of practice schemes, I have a little tapestry loom. It's like the size of a sheet of paper and I figured these would be Good practice for weaving since they were practice spins as well. <laughs> Whenever I get around to playing around with that um, 
you know, my next fiber mentor. So I did start another bulky spin. I didn't bring it up here because I'm only filled like one out of the, what I am foreseeing to be four bobbins. <laughs> um, so I will share that with you guys next time. I think I got a little bit better. I'm kind of getting a little bit closer to what I had in mind for my bulky yarn. All right, friends, that does it for me. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe if you want to see more of my knitting nonsense here. <laughs> um, yeah, if you have any questions or want to drop me a comment down below, please feel free. I love interacting with you guys and building this little community. So it's mid-February. I'll be back in mid-March to catch up with you guys again. In the meantime, I hope that your knitting treats you well and that you enjoy the last few days of winter um, before spring is here. So I will see you again soon. Bye. Moving on to works in progress. This is a completely, completely new, I guess that's a good segue for me to talk about the laurels. Blah, blah.